your blessed greetings, beautiful souls, wonderful people, beloved of God. May all of you be happy, full of vigor, full of wonderful events in your life. Last time we were talking about karma, but up to now we only talk about the karma from humans and other beings such as animal people, but we have not gone deep into the karma of special beings like plants and trees. Trees we mentioned sometimes before, but plants I think quite rarely. So today I would like to talk about that. Because I was editing some of the earlier public conferences and one of the questions from the audience was do people go to the extent of creating no karmic consequences like uh, being breatharians, for example. And I don't think most of the humans on the planet are ready for that. So we will just concentrate more on the vegan diet. You see, with the vegan diet, we also have to be involved with many kinds of you know, beings in the vegetable and fruit kingdoms, such as apples, oranges, the usual fruits that people eat every day. So I just want to tell you that we could be vegan with very little karma and little harm to the plant beings. It is surprising to know that some of the plants, some of the vegetables that we eat, do not feel pain or feel less pain than other plants, other vegetables. If you really want to have less karma and cause less pain, less suffering and less sorrow for the plants, you can choose, you can select some special plants or special fruits to eat. I have done a little research into the kinds of vegetables and fruits that have no pain at all or very little pain. The ones that I read here should have very little pain and suffering when you kind of cut them or pluck them to eat. Even fruits. When you pluck them from the trees, such as oranges, apples, mangoes, or papayas, the plants or the trees that bear these fruits do feel pain. I mean, like physical pain, even though they can't scream out loud to you. It's like nipping, like somebody nips your skin hard. That kind of pain, and also they feel so panicky and fearful. And as you can see, sometimes you cut the plant and some liquid comes out, fluid comes out from the plant. That is their so-called blood, just like we bleed when we are injured or cut. Most of the plants and trees, they do feel pain when we cut them for any reason, like for consumption. I only list here for you those plants, those vegetables, even those herbs, which do not feel such pain. Now, I'm reading some of them, not very orderly, because I just wrote down what I knew and fast. It's not a complete list. A rough rule is if the vegetable or plant you take food from contains mostly water or their body is just made of fiber, such as the like of uh, the banana plant, then it is most likely that they are painless, though there are, of course, exceptions. I didn't categorize them into alphabetical order, so I read what I wrote down for you. In case you want to choose the lesser pain and lesser suffering for the plants or the trees, all the trees feel pain when you cut them for any reason. And most of the vegetable plants do feel pain. So these are the ones that have very, very little or no pain at all. I'm reading those which have no pain at all. Watercress, cabbage, water spinach, 
cauliflower, coriander when they're young and sprouted very shortly, as if they are just still a sprout, not when they have already grown into plants and almost having a hard body. When they don't have yet a hard body, just like young sprouts, then it's okay. Then they don't feel pain yet. Soya sprouts, pumpkin sprouts, it's okay. Rice, uh, wheat, corn, sugar from sugar cane, bread you can eat, yes, from wheat. You have a lot of choice, like even vegan pizza, vegan butter if it doesn't contain olive oil, asparagus, rocket, and tofu you can eat, tempeh, seaweed. Of course, you can eat vegan brown sugar or castor sugar, raw and not uh, processed at all sugar. But of course, you should eat less sugar, yeah? Sugar is not that good for you. The less the better, yeah? Broccoli, onions, garlic, all kinds of melons you can eat. Cucumber can do. Sesame seeds, all seeds, peanuts, uh, almost all nuts you can eat. Because when they dry, they fall down to the ground, then you can pick them up and eat them. In principle, anything that has fallen from the tree already, you can eat. When I was in Germany, along the roads, there were many apple trees. They don't belong to anyone. They just grow on the roadside. And I saw that many apples fell to the ground. I sometimes picked them up. They were green, not completely ripe or anything. And I picked them up and came home and made apple pie. <laughs> this you can do, yeah? Mostly like that. All nuts you can eat. Most of the nuts is then dry and fell from the tree. You can eat all kinds of beans, fresh or dry beans, lentils, uh, mushrooms, all kinds of eatable, not poisonous mushrooms you can eat. Avocado, surprisingly, you can pluck and eat. Iceberg, lettuce, romaine, lettuce, mustard greens, mustard leaves, kohlrabi, Chinese cabbage, bok choy, celery. All kinds of yams you can eat. All potatoes, like sweet potato and normal potato, you can eat, of course. Okay, that's it. You know, the, the list I made is very short. It's mostly for myself. Even the flower from the pumpkin you should not eat, because when you pluck the flower from the pumpkin plant body, the body of the plant feels pain and sorrow also. Even carrots, when you pluck them up, to eat, they feel pain, yes. And those roots, like uh, white radish and other types of radish, do feel pain. But there are some roots, like yams, you can eat. Sweet potato, all right. Potato, also okay. There are just some plants, some little herbs that do not have pain karma, that's why. Isn't that funny? Yeah, some plants have pain, some plants don't. But that's the way it is. Not just humans feel pain, but plants also feel pain. I'm not saying that you have to eat all that I have told you, but uh, you can, you know, in case you want to minimize karma. But nevertheless, make sure that you have enough vitamins and nutrition. Yeah, okay? By taking vegan vitamins and or supplements. All kinds of sprouts you can eat, like soy sprouts or sunflower seed sprouts. And by the way, sunflower oil you can use. Olive oil doesn't belong to the no pain category. When people beat the whole olive trees and beat all their branches, they do feel pain. But uh, funny, you know, coffee, when they pluck the fruit from a coffee tree, the tree doesn't feel pain. But the tea plants feel pain when you pluck the tea leaves to use. And other kinds of herbs, you know, most of the herbs feel pain when you pluck them to eat because their body already has hardened into a kind of a real plant, not just a sprout. The reason why, for example, 
maybe what a spinach doesn't feel pain when you plug it is because it's mostly empty, empty inside. And the sugar cane also has mostly water inside. And the banana fruit you can eat. The banana tree doesn't feel pain when you cut the banana bunch for consumption. And most of the fruits, they do feel pain when you pluck them. The trees of the fruits feel pain when you pluck them to eat. So mostly there's not much that we can eat. Berries you can eat. The berries don't feel pain. The berry tree is okay. Berry fruit's okay. But uh, blueberry is not. Some other kinds of berries are easy to fall from the tree when you touch it. Then you can eat them. That's all for now. Yeah. <laughs> the best I told you is to eat air. <laughs> but we're not used to it. Uh, that's difficult. Difficult to get used to eating air like the breatharian people. But it's not impossible. Just don't try when you cannot, because you will harm yourself. Your body might wither and die. So meanwhile, just uh, eat the vegetables that I have read for you, and you can eat them with rice or bread, you know. And you can eat the vegan noodles that are made from wheat. Anything made from wheat is okay. Anything made from rice is okay, for example, like that. And many other spices, like, uh, for example, the uh, star, anise, and cloves. They also dry, and when you harvest them, the trees don't feel so much pain, almost none. But many spices we cannot, like uh, peppers even, you know, black pepper, white pepper and chili peppers, stuff like that. When we pluck them, we do cause pain for the plants. And of course, a little bit of karma that goes with it. It's not because of karma that uh, we don't eat uh, other plants or vegetables, but because we don't want to hurt them, that's all. It's not because of karma that uh, we don't eat uh, other plants or vegetables, but because we don't want to hurt them, that's all. If you do want to avoid hurting the plants or causing them worry or sorrow or nervousness, then you choose the vegetables in the list that I read to you. They have no pain. Or even if they have, it's like nothing. But the ones that I read to you is nothing, okay? No pain at all. Just in case you prefer that way. You have to see if your body can be sustained with the limited vegetables and fruits. But mostly like bananas, they are also complete food, you know. One of your monk's brothers, he was in Costa Rica and his stubble food was <laughs> always banana. Yeah, he lived like that for many years. But now he doesn't live like that anymore because I supply, you know, enough food, all kinds of food. All right, then I hope you have fun, <laughs> you know, discovering a new diet for yourself. If you prefer that way, go slowly and try, okay? Otherwise, I knew one monk. I live in his temple for some time. He ate only brown rice and sesame powder and water. And he lived very long and strong, and he's a Qigong master as well. If you use a knife to cut his throat, you can't. You can't cut through, for example, very strong. But he practiced every day, of course. Apart from being a Buddhist monk and doing other monk rituals, he also practiced Qigong every day. And he had a school teaching other people, Qigong, in Taiwan. He passed away already some years ago. But when he was alive, that's all he ate. And I knew also a nun. Personally, I mean, personally, I saw them. Like this monk, I live in his temple with other 
monks and nuns for some time. And I knew one nun who didn't eat anything. She drank just a little bit of water. But that water was, of course, already blessed by reciting the names of the Buddhas before she drank. She also passed away already, but when she was alive, she never spoke even. She didn't want to speak. She just used sign language, and her disciples would translate to you. I went to visit her, and that's what they do. They translated her sign language for us. I asked her how people could just live by drinking water like her. And she used sign language to tell me, just go slowly, <laughs> one step at a time. I heard that before she went waterian, she ate fruits. They just brought her a plate of fruits every day, and one day she pushed it away. Then they knew she didn't want to eat any more fruits. So from then on, she just drank some water. I knew her personally, and also talked to her through sign language, of course. And we show many shows on our Supreme Master TV about monks and nuns who don't eat. That is uh, common nowadays. But do not try all this, okay? If you really want to try, you have to find some expert guidance, some people who know how to do that. Otherwise, just uh, eat simple foods, exercise, and do exercise daily. Walk in fresh air, for example, like that. and live a normal life with the minimum variety of food intact, as less as possible. But you have to watch if your body is suitable for that kind of limited vegetables and fruits. You have to try that. Otherwise, you see many people can live with very minimum food intact, and body, and exercise, find some expert guidance some people who know how to do that. Otherwise, just uh, eat simple foods, exercise, and do exercise daily. Walk in fresh air, for example, like that, and live a normal life with the minimum variety of food intact, as uh, less as possible. But you have to watch if your body is suitable for that kind of limited vegetables and fruits. You have to try that. Otherwise, you see, many people can live with very minimum food intake. You don't have to try anything. It's just for your information, okay? As long as you are vegan, I'm grateful already. And all the heavens will support you. And our planet will be sustained, will be kept safe and sound for you to continue to live on and for your next and next generations of children. If you love your children, please be vegan and teach them also to be vegan, to minimize the karmic consequences and to create a benevolent energy for our world. Then the planet will continue to survive and so will we. As mentioned before, if some kind of herbs or plants that you make into sprouts and you eat when they still sprouts or grown very little, not grown into a hard body of a plant or a tree, then it's all right to consume. But it's better if you have your own garden, then you can decide. You see, for example, if a peppermint plants planted by you, in your own garden, then you can use it if you cut the leaves very far away from the stem or from the body of the peppermint plant. Then that doesn't cause that much pain, very little or almost zero. Or like basil, you can cut like just two-thirds of the leaves and leave the bottom part of the leaves still attached to the plant. And some little leaves still left, then the new leaves will grow in that corner between the leaf stem and the body of the plant. New leaves will spring forth and grow. For many herbs, it's like that. But some herbs, you have to cut the whole branch, even a small twig, then it will cause pain. For example, rosemary, 
if you want to use rosemary, you, you have to cut a twig or a, a part of the twig. That would cause pain for the rosemary plant, or bush, you call them. And those berries that you can just easily pick, almost like it will fall into your hand if you touch them. Those very soft berries, they are okay. They don't feel that much pain. So very little things. The plant of the strawberry does feel pain. But like peanut plants, they mostly already wither and yellow before people pull them out of the ground. Sesame plants, similar. On rice and wheat, they already die out. Their spirit left before people harvested them. So it's all right to eat. I am sure there are some more vegetables and fruits you can eat, but most fruit trees like mangoes and apples feel pain when you pluck them. But if they fall on the ground, then it's no problem. You can eat, there's no karma at all. They have already fallen off the tree, so you don't do much. Just pick them up. When I saw any fruit that fell from the tree before, I always pick them up to see if I still can use. Very nice also, still. And like tomato plants, we can eat the fruit. And the plant doesn't feel pain because it doesn't have pain karma. Isn't that wonderful? The plants even have karma. So anyway, maybe next time, if there's something else that you ask and uh, I know about it, then I will tell you. All right. May God bless you all. And may God bless all the beautiful plants and beautiful herbs and bless our whole planet. You see, our planet is materialized and becomes valuable due to all the beings on this planet's merit, collective merit, put together. So the planet will materialize and become livable. And then the planet would be disintegrated, be destroyed, be made to disappear. Also because of the humans, the beings on the planet's lack of merit by their actions, by doing something contrary to building up merit by doing things that destroy the merit or are devoid of merit. We are not blessed to have this home as a planet anymore. It's just like you have some money to put down for deposit or you have money to build your house. But the moment you don't have any more money or you owe money and you can't pay, then the bank either takes it over or you have to leave the property because you can't pay for it. You can't continue to live there anymore. Similar to our planet, it is our home. And if we don't have enough merit to keep it, then we can't survive. We have to leave the planet, or the planet will be destroyed. So please be careful what you eat. At least be vegan, okay? Be vegan. The plant kingdom is so rich in nutrients, vitamins, and health-sustaining properties. God gives us everything we need. Even if some people don't have enough food or they can't work to earn money to buy food, the whole planet, if we are vegan, can sustain everyone on this earth. There is enough food to go around to help everyone to stay healthy, full, filled with nutrition from all the things we have or are able to plant on this planet. There should be no one who goes hungry at night or any day or ever at all because God gives us so much, so much. We just waste it all. Like we have enough food to feed people, but we use it to raise animal people instead and leave the humans to starve. That is not right, not the right thing to do. We have to do the right thing to live our lives correctly. Then nothing bad will come to us. But if we commit an offense against the common sense, the logic, then we don't have to discuss about heavens, punishments or merit or anything yet. Remember the folklore story that uh, I told you a long time ago. One person went to visit 
a sphere in the universe, and the heavens make food for them, and both sides sat there but were miserable and starving, and could not eat anything. And the other section, the same, heaven offered them a lot of food, and they were happy, happy, you know, and laughing and singing, having full nutrition in their stomach, you know, and all that. And the guests discovered that there's a long spoon. When you bend your elbow to put that spoon in your mouth, you cannot because the spoon is very long. The first group did not use it because they could not fit themselves. But the second group used a long spoon to fit each other. So they were all very happy and ate to their way full. So it is up to us to decide what kind of attitude, what kind of quality we should have and keep. And whatever is a bad quality, we should just discard it. It's like garbage. If we don't want it, we just throw out. details on the low karma diet that can help us minimize pain and suffering caused to other beings, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash low karma diet.